Uh, we've got a minute or two. Any questions uh, before we get started? Residents, and today we will get into uh, chemistry of dienes. We've been dying to uh, get to this topic. Dying. One to addition, one for addition. Question? Yes, it does. Yeah, phenol has, you can draw uh, three additional resonance structures. Did you look at the answer key? Uh -huh. uh, but when you draw resonance structures, where are you putting the charge in? You're moving it from oxygen to what? To carbon. To carbon. And carbon doesn't like minus that much. So even though it is resonance structures, and even though you can draw three of them, because it's carbon, it doesn't handle the minus charge. So those, so those resin structures are pretty minor. And the carboxylate, when you draw a resin structure, where do you put the minus in? You move it from oxygen to another oxygen. And the other oxygen is so much better at handling a negative charge, so you're spreading it over a much better atom. So even though it's uh, only one additional resin structure, it's a much more significant resin structure. Yes? Very typical question. Students think phenol is more acidic because more resonance structure. But I actually know. Very good question. Recognize that. Okay, guys, uh, let's get started. Uh, lab this week, uh, we're just going to do mass spec. Okay, so no extra lab. We'll meet downstairs. We'll have mass spec lecture. Uh, the group report is not going to be due until the following week. Maybe due on Monday, a week from the day here in class. Okay. Uh, mass specs are going to be run by the TAs this week and handed out to you. It will be a mass spec of your sample that you submitted. Uh, okay. Dying chemistry. 1 2 versus 1 4 addition. <coughs> Conjugated dying. Okay. One two addition, also known as direct addition. Uh, answer key to the resonance problems that were in that packet were sent out. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions about that uh, on Wednesday. Okay, one two addition. Shown here, this is the one two addition product. Okay, HPR. Good old uh, alkene reaction, this is really no different. In this reaction, the HBr is adding right here. There's a new H on the end, right? Okay. Uh, to get to that product mechanism, we have H plus Br minus. As we've done from day one, I said we can just start with showing that ionized, right? Uh, new H on the end, these electrons attack here, and we get boom, boom. New H added here, and carbocation there. Okay, electrons break your way, go attack H, leaving this cation, this is a carbocation. New bond to H over here. Nothing new. How do we get that product? Well, Br minus just adds here, and that gives that product. Okay. Why is this called a 1-2 addition? Because the new H is here, the bromine is right next door. So if the new H is on the 1 carbon, the bromine is on the 2 carbon. The 1-2 is the relationship between the H and the Br and the end product. Any 
Now when we do 1,4 additions, the H will be here, but the bromine is going to be over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and that would be a 1,4 addition. We'll see how that happens. Okay, this here, this cation. Uh, with the double bond next to the carbocation, we've seen that before, we can do resonance. This is a resonance stabilized cation. Windshield wiper these over, we can show resonance structure. Boop, 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 plus here, here. I'll draw in the new H. So it is a resonance stabilized carbocation. Back over here, we could have asked, where do you want to make carbocation, left or right? Right. Right, why? Secondary carbon. Yes, it, it's uh, secondary, but also why? Also because of resonance. That's more, even more important factor. By the way, carbocation next to an alkene is called an allylic. Carbocation. I'm sure you can find that on Wikipedia. No? Uh, okay, resin stabilized. To get this product, Br minus, bam, attacks carbocation right there. That gives that a product. Uh, this is the product you get at cold temperature. This is kinetic product. This is called the kinetic product. When we get to 1,4 addition, that will be called the thermodynamic product. 1, 2 is the kinetic product. Kinetic implies rate. This is the product that's formed fastest, and thus it's always formed first. Why is it formed fastest? Maybe we'll wait till we look at 1, 4, and then we can compare, and then answer maybe easier. Why does this form faster? Um, of course, the true, the true structure here is the hybrid. Let's look below. If you do this reaction, but do it with higher temperature, for example, about 40 degrees or higher, same exact reaction. You don't get that product. You don't get the 1,2 addition product. Instead, you get the 1,4 addition product. We come down here, the new H is here, and the bromine is over here. So if that's 1, that's 4. H is on the 1 carbon, bromine is on the 4. This is an example of a 1,4 addition, also known as a conjugate addition. 1,2 addition is also known as a direct addition. Direct addition is analogous to what we've been doing for the past month. There's been direct additions. It's a conjugate addition. Actually, here's your mechanism. It's the same exact mechanism up to here. But guess how you get this product? The bromine adds where? The bromine adds to this resonance structure. And if the bromine adds to this resonance structure, what do you get? Get that product. Now, you had this here. You could add bromine here and draw you an arrow to that product. Basically, two different outcomes. The outcomes depend on which resonance structure does the bromide add to. If it adds here, you get that product. That's, that would be a 1 2 addition. If it adds here, you get this product. That would be a 1 4 addition. Y'all see that? Now this is called the thermodynamic product, which implies, you know, stability, energy stability. This is the most stable product. Why is this product more stable than the one above? 
governed by the alkene. Is the double bond is disubstituted. Yeah. Up there, the alkene is monosubstituted. Disubstituted alkene, more stable, right? They're isomers. This alkene is more stable. The one up top is formed faster. Why does the one up top form faster? Big thing to make sure you understand. Call it what what step? Are you calling this a step? This, this is not a step. This is something we did on the board. But as soon as this as soon as this alkene attacks an H, what do you get? That reacts with H plus to give this. This is not a step. This is only us doing something on the board. This is one thing here. This is only one molecule. This is two fake, non-accurate descriptions of one, one thing. What is, it, what is it really? It's this. And the Br minus is, importantly, where's the Br minus? When this attacks the H plus, let's say the H plus is here, and this attacks, and it gives this, you, you gotta get that in, in your mind. It doesn't give that, it doesn't give that. It gives the blend of this. It's like when this attacks the H plus, it gives pink. Here's pink. I'm just showing red and white because pink is hard to show. It gives this. Um, when this attacks H plus like this, our old fashioned, where's the Br minus at this point? Br minus is right here close by because even though these are ionized, the plus and the minus are going to be attracted to each other. <coughs> okay? They're going to be close together. So when this attacks, where's the Br minus at? Br minus is sort of right here. It's nearby this H. Now this can attack here or here. Now isn't this cumbersome though? When I attack here, what am I going to do with these partial bonds? It's cumbersome. It's got two different sides that can attack. It's easier, and that's what we do as organic chemists, it's easier to show these two fake structures and say, hey, we can do conventional chemistry, it can add here, or it can add here. Look at this. Which is going to be faster, this adding here or there? Which would be faster, A or B? A would be faster, why? Closer. First, you got to realize, why is the BR over here? Because that's where the H was. It's nearby the A. A is faster because it's closer. This is called a proximity effect. Okay. It takes more energy, it takes longer time to go cross country and attack way over there at the four position. But, you see, this is hard to show. What do I do when mechanistically when that is? Do I, what am I moving here? Do I end up with a partial bond over there? See, that's very cumbersome. But instead, if I attack here, that, that's not, we see we get this structure.
that's a faster attack. That product is formed faster. But guess what? That's not the most stable product. This is the more stable product because it's a disubstituted alkene. That's the kinetic product formed faster. This is the more stable product, i.e., the, the thermodynamic product. It's more stable. Okay? Let's flip over and look at something that we've looked at before. Here's a reaction course diagram for this exact reaction. Exact reaction. Here's the alkene. It's just shown sort of condensed instead of all full Lewis structure with all bonds. The alkene, either one is the same thing, reacts with H plus. We get a common intermediate. Here it is. Here's your, here's your intermediate. Now, you may prefer to show the two different phase resonance structures because they're kind of easier to work with. Okay? Now, from there, we can form two different products. Which one's more stable? The one four product, right? So that's why it's lower. The one two product is higher in energy. Now, usually we say the lower product should have a lower transition state. But is that the case here? No, the lower energy product actually has a higher transition state energy for activation energy. The less stable product has a lower activation energy. Why? Why is that activation energy lower? Right here. It takes less energy for this to attack here. Just like here. Which takes which which takes more energy? High five here, make bond here, or way over here? I'm tired now. It took a lot of energy to come over here. <laughs> Going cross country takes more energy. Yes, it leads to the more stable product. A is lower energy uh, activation energy. Okay. Any questions about that reaction for the diagram? Now, water's running downhill, or water's running down the road. Which pathway is it going to take? This is A, this is B. Which pathway is it going to take? A. A is going to be formed first and fastest. But that leads to the less stable, the 1 2 product, the direct addition product. So, look back over on the other side, how do you get the 1,4 product? Cold or heat? 1,4 product arise, comes, is the major product with heat. Well, how is that? If you do this cold, and it's coming here, there's not enough energy to go up there. Even if there was, it wouldn't go up there. It's going to come this way and you come here. But if you heat this thing, it will actually reverse. If you give it enough heat, it can come back up here and reverse. What would reverse look like? Reverse of this step. Well, what is this step? This is the bromine adding to the cation, right? What's the reverse of the bromine adding to the cation? Well, not leaving the cation, leaving the product to form, reform what? To reform the cation. Cation, 
product. What if you reverse? You go back to what? Cation. Common intermediate resident stabilized carbocation. That's the common intermediate, right? But if you come here, if you reverse, what do you go back to? Carbocation. But how do you go from product back to carbocation? The bromine has to leave. With enough heat, the bromine can, can leave, it can ionize off and reform that and go back. And with enough heat, it can then go up there. Now you can say, well, why would it go up there even with more heat? Well, if you've got a lot of heat, for example, if water's running down the road, but it's a hurricane and it's just tons of water, and it can, is it going to go this way or this way? Well, it's going to go this way, but what if it's so much water that it's just a big gush? Is any going to go up here? Yeah, a little bit. It could go that way. Maybe only a tiny little bit, but once it goes that way, it goes to a very low energy place. What if you could turn that water back around, the, the water that went this way, what if you could turn it back around and let it go again? Well, maybe a little bit would go up again. And the water that went down, you could turn around and let it go again. Every time you turn around and let it go again, a little bit more goes uphill. And before long, it's all going to be over there, if that's preferred. Basically, with heat, this becomes an equilibrium and it goes back and forth. Whenever you can establish an equilibrium, that's when thermodynamics takes over and your more stable product will be favored. So it goes back and forth, a little bit spills over, but then it's, then it's there. A little bit spills over and then it's there. With cold temperature, it comes here and it never can reverse. Not enough, not enough heat to reverse. So you're stuck right here with cold temperature, Bless you. but with heat it can reverse, you can achieve equilibrium. So this kind of summarizes that down at the bottom. Uh, HBR low temperature, you're going to get this one, two addition product. Kinetic product. It's going faster, that's what you're going to get. Lower transition state leading to it. If you heat, even if you take this and just heat it, because actually what we said here is this forms first. It's set up there, that forms first. E even down here with heat, this is formed first. But with heat, this can convert to that. Now, first you've got to go in reverse. You've got to reform the carbocation. That's one cation, right? That's one cation that I serve. That's, that's, the, that's one intermediate. How can you go from here to here? What has to happen? The bromine has to... Leave? Leaves, you go back to the car. Okay. Can a bromine just leave? What happens if you put HBr in water? What happens? What? Uh, yeah, either either one either term would work. You put this in water, what do you get? H plus Br minus. Right? What does that involve? Bromine leaving the H? <coughs> well, here, it, it can leave a carbon also. Especially with heat. Leave, go back to common intermediate. Then it can attack on this over here. That may be a, a higher transition state, but that's okay. We're heating, so we can do that, we get here, now this is actually, you can go back and forth, but once you establish an equilibrium, which is favored? The more stable one is favored if you can achieve an equilibrium. 
heat allows you to achieve the equilibrium, now that's favored, and that's going to be your major product. If you do it cold, you're going to be stuck here. Questions about that? Okay, that introductory example was a symmetrical diene. No matter which alkene we attacked initially, we would really get the same product. What if we use a non-symmetrical diene? This one has a methyl on it. Actually, what's the name of that company? Have you seen this before? What's the name of that? Not IUPAC name. What's the common name of that company? Who said? Isoprene. Very good. What's isoprene uh, used for? Uh, uh, to make what type of compounds? Yeah, what'd you do? Study this weekend? <laughs> you didn't do any Halloween stuff? <laughs> terpenes, yeah. Like what? What's an example of a terpene? Beta carotene? And carrots? Makes carrots orange? No, it's a terpene. Uh, the carrot plant makes. Yeah, no. It's amazing stuff. Okay, what if you react uh, isoprene with ACL? Well, it's a good old alkene reaction, but you've got two different alkenes. There you go. Which product is going to be formed? First off, what conditions are we under? Because we can get two different products depending on the conditions. Cold temperature. Which product are you going to get? Kinetic or thermodynamic? Kinetic. Okay, kinetic would be, is that the 1, 2 or the 1, 4? 1, 2. One, two. Yes. That's right. Uh, well, it's 1, 2. Which one of those products shown are 1, 2 products? Yes, this is a one two product. Oh, right. And which other one? And that's a one two product. This is a one four product, and this is a one four product. Because out here, where's the new H at? We've added HCl. Where's the new H? New H is right there, right? Yep. Because that's a mouthful. There's three H's on the end. How many there? Only two. New H there. Where's the chlorine? Duh. Over here. One, two, three, four. Right? Okay. But we got two different one, two products. Which one's going to be formed? The reason we have two different ones is because these alkenes are not the same. One alkene has a methyl and one does not. How do we do this? Well, we need to show on our paper, not in our head because that's prone to getting confused, on our paper, so we can draw it and then we can be distracted and come back to it, the two different possible intermediates. If this alkene reacted, are we going to leave cation on left or right? Correct. Why? What? It starts with a res. <laughs> Resonance. That's why. Because this cation is resin stabilized. Okay. Now we can draw a resonance structure, but since we're doing one, two, where's the chlorine going to attack? Do we need to draw a resonance structure and have an attack over there? We know we could, but since it's one, two, the chlorine's going to attack where? One, two. So if chlorine then attacks here. Which product does this give, by the way?
Yes. Uh, let's call that A path. We give A. And with that one. Now actually we do need to draw a resonance structure. The resonance structure would look like what? structure would look like that. There is a new H here. Okay, let's react the other alkene. H plus. Where are we going to leave cation? Right or left? Yeah. On the left. And that would give, we could draw up there somewhere, wherever it's Boom, 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 boom. That cation. Resonance structure. Windshield wiper over. Boom, 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 boom. There's resonance structure. This is pathway B. There's intermediate B. It's only one intermediate, right? It's two fake forms of B. This is two fake forms of A. Now, if B leads to the product, which product do we get? Well, we're doing one, two. <laughs> which product would we get? Well, it's the only other one to product would be this one. Because H here, chlorine here, chlorine with two methyls, chlorine with two methyls double bond. Okay. So which which are we going to get? First off, we know it's either it's either A or B product. Because we know one two, because cold temperature is one two. But here we have a choice between two different one twos. Which one are we going to get? Anybody have a gander? Somebody said B. Why B? Go back over here. If this reaction with HCl, we could get two different products. We could get chlorine there, or we could get chlorine there. Now exam. Which product are we going to get? Autumn. Autumn, why? Tertiary. Tertiary cation. Why does that make this preferred product? Because tertiary cation is going to be preferred to be formed. Tertiary cation is your intermediate. Here is a primary cation. Tertiary cation more stable. Thus, that, thus this intermediate is going to be the one that's formed. Cation stability. That's, that's how we predict this. Same thing here. Which cation is more stable? This cation or this one? This is just one cation, right? Which cation is more stable? A cation or the B cation? <coughs> well, to assess this, we just look at the composite as a blend of these. Just blend them together, okay? This is a secondary carbocation. And this is a what? Prim primary. We know the true structure is a blend, but it's a blend of a secondary and a primary. The true structure here is a blend, but it's a primary and a what? Tertiary. Which blend is better, primary tertiary or primary secondary? Yes, this is your better cation. And if we did reaction coordinate diagram for each, I'm not going to label things. We start here, okay? 
Let's call this D for diene. Here's D. Two different pathways it can take. Uh, it can lead, we can go to, we can form the A cation, or we can form the B cation. Well, do they have different energies? Yes. The A cation is here. The B cation is here, right? More stable. Which is going to, how, which, how is the reaction going to go? Going to go B. Since it goes this way, which product do we get? Get that one right there. That's the predicted product. In this case, not only did we have to know it's 1, 2, but then we had two different 1, 2 possibilities. How do you determine? You have to look at the stability of your cation. It's two different cations. But each cation has resonance stabilization. Now there's other possible cations. We could have shown cation out here. We call that the C cation. The cation out here would have been even higher because it would have been primary and not resonance stable. We showed the two resonance stabilizers, but of the two, B is the most stable. Okay. Try the next one on your own, right here. HI, everybody. Oh, we're heating here, right? Delta means heat. How do we do? Products, can you tell? Can you tell which one's most stable based on alkene substitution? That's more important. Okay, uh, let's say this alkene over here reacts first. Uh, H plus. Where we're going to make cation, right or left? Correct. So this attacks. We get boom, boom, 
boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom. New H there, cation there, and that's a nice tertiary cation. But what does the resonance look like? Windshield wiper over. Boom, 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 boom. UH there. That's resonance, and this is secondary. So if this alkene reacts, we will get a cation that has tertiary and secondary characteristics. This is one cation. The hybrid has characteristics of both. What if this alkene reacts? Are we going to make cation on right or left? Or either? Right, left, or either? It's right. Who said either? Why either? Secondary Secondary Either way. Yeah, but one of them is secondary with resonance, and one of them is secondary without resonance. I mean, cation here, okay? I'm going to abbreviate it. Would you rather make that cation or that one? Let's put one more carbon here. They're both secondary, right? Okay, side point. They're both secondary. Is one better than the other? Resin stabilized. Much better than that. <laughs> These dying reactions, you always make the resin stabilized cation. That's going to be that's going to come from making the cation next to the other pi bond. Ah, uh, H plus electrons come away from here, and we're going to get boom, 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 new H here, cation there. Boom, 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 boom. That's secondary. Now when we do our resonance, boom, 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 boom. Windshield wiper over. I see a uh, methyl there, you know? That's secondary, what is this? Primary. So this one has primary secondary characteristics. This one has secondary tertiary. Which one's better? This one has secondary tertiary characteristics. So at this point, forget about this. Here we go. If the iodine adds here, that's a 1 2 product. 1 2. If it adds here, that's a 1 4 product. Heat. Heat gives the most stable. Which would be more stable? Iodine adding here? Iodine added there, the double bond would be what substitution? The guy substitutes, just like that. Iodine added here, the double bond would be what? Yeah. The iodine is going to add here. And when the iodine adds there, what do you get? You get that product shot. Is this a 1 2 product or a 1 4 product? The new H is here, iodine here. It's a 1 4 product. Indeed, it is 1 4. But more importantly, it is, is it, it's the most stable. Yeah, it's the most stable. What if you did this with HI and cold temperature? Show the product over there. Cold temperature product for this reaction.
iodine would have added right here. One, two. Right? Everybody with me? Questions about that one? chemistry to show them. There's no options. As long as you've got everything connected, I mean, yes, it is tetrahedral, but charge however you want. I mean, there's no options. The alkene is not going to uh, do anything. It theoretically could, but the alkene is going to maintain trans because it's really thermodynamically controlled, the alkene is. You can, you can propose a mechanism of this going to cis, but it will be thermodynamically controlled and thus trans is going to be your favorite outcome. Okay, there's other ones for you to do. Just word of caution. With heat, heat does not always give the 1,4 product. In my introductory example, it did. What does heat give? Heat gives the most stable product. Sometimes the 1, 2 may be more stable than the 1, 4. On the other hand, cold always gives 1, 2 due to the proximity effect. So there's other ones for you to do down there. Okay, deals all the reaction. The Ozalder reaction, uh, you may remember Laurel and Hardy. Uh, this is Dills and Alder. They won Nobel Prize in 1950. Very important reaction of making rings, uh, which has been very useful. Uh, for example, making compounds like cholesterol, vitamin D, uh, lots of natural products. Make them synthetically. Uh, involves forming carbon-carbon bonds. which historically was quite difficult until such reactions came along. Here's the simplest of a diels alder reaction. It's a diene reacting with an ene. So a diene reacting with just a plain alkene. Three pi bonds total. The diene has how many double bonds? Di, two, and then the monoene just is, that's one pi bond. So three pi bonds. Now also, the diene gives you four carbons, the ene gives you two. Now you can have substituents on here. But Dills Auger gives a six-membered ring, okay? Dills Auger gives a cyclohexene, a six-membered ring with one alkene. So every Dills Auger gives a cyclohexene. Now there could be more double bonds in here, okay? But it will at least contain the six membered ring and at least one alkene. Could contain more than one. Or it could, or it could contain a triple bond. Maybe not in this structure. Actually, I'll take that back. Actually, this could be a triple bond. Two pi bonds reacting with one pi bond. There's another pi bond there, and nothing happens to it. In the end, it's called a four plus two cycloaddition because four plus two equals what? Six. Four plus two makes six membered ring. Um, 
this is your diene. Now this guy over here, the alkene or, or alkyne, gets a name. It likes dienes. What do you call something that likes dienes? Dienes. Yes, a dienophile. We call uh, someone who likes wine. Winophile. This guy, you have a diene and a dienophile. The dienophile is just an alkene or alkyne. Usually alkene. Alkene is most common. Mechanism. What's going on here? We'll uh, show this and then we'll end. It's a concerted reaction. It all happens in one step. Uh, you can start by saying these electrons move here, these electrons move here, and these electrons move here. This carbon makes single bond to that carbon. This makes single bond to that carbon. And importantly, when this moves up, what's between these two carbons at the end? Yes, double bond here. We'll end there. Uh, please be looking ahead at this. Please be doing those dying reactions. I'll send out a key to those dying reactions.